Happy Monday morning, everybody. It's your boy Mo here for another episode of Mo Mondays. And in today's episode, uh, I'm going to spend a bit of time talking about the pro portal. So in previous episodes, we spoke about um, the Teams Admin Center, and I did promise and I did say, hey, I'm going to do the pro portal. Um, so in today's episode, I'm going to give you part one of the pro portal because there's so much in the pro portal that we can talk about. And there's no way I'm going to be able to do that in the next kind of five to six minutes. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, everybody, welcome back. And uh, like I said, in today's episode, we are going to be talking about the Teams Rooms Pro Portal. Very, very easy to get into, of course. First things first, you need to ensure that you are using a pro license uh, for your devices. And if you are using a pro license, uh, you can then have uh, access to the portal. Very simple. Across the top here is portal.rooms.microsoft.com. That will then bring you over onto this homepage. Now, the good thing about this homepage is it will give you pretty much all the information that comes straight out of the engineering teams straight onto this, uh, onto this page. So for example, we'll start off here on the left hand side, we can see that we have open office hours, um, and open office hours are, uh, essentially calls with the engineering and the pro teams, um, where you can effectively ask any question that you want about MTR. Uh, about the, the pro portal, about Rip Health, etc. And these guys are here to absolutely help you. But of course, where I see the most value is really on this side, looking at all the updates. So for example, you can see the latest updates that are pushing across, you know, what's new uh, in terms of update management, new device enrollment updates, uh, the latest app update, what it's doing, what we're introducing. And we also give you hyperlinks directly into, you know, more information for, for these updates. Uh, and of course, one of my favorites, if you've been watching uh, some of the uh, Friday shows uh, that Jimmy hosts uh, uh, at Merit, they spoke about one of the new updates that is coming to the pro portal where, we're at, where we are now starting to monitor more items uh, inside of an MTR room. So this update here, uh, you can see we're now looking at things like USB power setting talking about whether Bluetooth is being disabled or malfunctioning, you know, uh, is the Windows version unsupported, etc. cetera. Um, but on this homepage, you will literally get all the information, the latest information and, and kind of notes uh, that are relevant for the room. Okay, so moving on. Here on the left-hand side in traditional Microsoft format is how you would monitor rooms. And of course, we've got the home, which is the homepage that we're on right now. Uh, and the next thing that we do, which we think is the most important thing to look at straight away is incidents. So as soon as I click incidents, we can see all the devices that are currently active, how many devices that need action and how many the system is investigating. Now, of course, in today's episode, I'm not really going to be talking about what is the pro portal. I'm just giving you the navigation, the rundown in terms of the pro portal already. Uh, we can do that in another episode, if not done already, where I can explain exactly what what is, uh, you know, what what you get with the pro license and what the pro portal is. But in this episode, it's just me more showing, um, you know, kind of what it looks like, what the actual room looks like. So on the left hand side, of course, we have incidents. As soon as you hit the incidents button, you will then see the, 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 the things straight away that are highlighted that the system has deemed as an issue or, a, or an incident. So if I open up security as an example, and in fact, let me go ahead and just open all the rest of them. You will see that Mo Khalifa's office, and this is my own demo device, right? Um, needs action. I've got, a, uh, I've got a warning that's popped up. It got flagged four months ago. And very quickly, I'm able to see that, hey, it's default credentials. I've not changed my password since it come out, uh, you know, since I booted it up, since it was from factory. Um, so if you know those default credentials, the SFB ones, uh, my device had never changed it. And on purpose, I did it like that. So it flags up uh, as an issue so you can see what it looks like. But if we start diving into kind of, you know, um, the more traditional types of issues. So we've got some connectivity issues across here. So we can see, I uh, can open this wider. I can see, you know, Michelle's office. He's had a few issues on some of his devices. Jimmy, uh, we've got Robert there as well hardware peripherals as well. So we can then all, all of a sudden see, you know, there's some issues with microphones or speakers, etc. Uh, let me give you an example of, you know, what it looks like. And in fact, what I'm going to do is not look at the active ones, but I'm going to look at the resolved ones because it will give me, you know, uh, a better demo and I'll explain why. 
So as an example, let's imagine I decide to go with uh, this one across here. So um, if I open that up, you tap on it. On the right-hand side, it will then tell you exactly what the issues are going. So we can see here which room it is. It's Rob's Lenovo room. There's a warning. It's showing a peripheral is power draining. So this signal is triggered when the USB peripheral power drain is enabled and the window setting. USBs can go under low power state when the screen goes to sleep. You can then hit the notes button. When you hit notes, this is where the AI will effectively send you messages to tell you exactly what it's doing and what it's trying to, uh, what it's trying to identify in terms of the issue. So you can see um, it start off across the top here uh, or across the bottom. We can, we have detected a USB configuration known as USB. But it tells you exactly what the issue is. And then, of course, we also uh, provide the help files to go along with that. The system, so the little robot sign effectively is saying, hey, it's the AI um, that's, that's talking here. So the AI is then saying, hey, a remediation to disable uh, has been submitted to the MTR. So that's happened automatically. And then straight within a couple of minutes, if not a couple of minutes, literally straight away, we have successfully disabled whatever the issue was across here. Now you can add your own notes if Microsoft engineers are in, uh, are involved or support engineers are involved as part of this particular incident. This is where they can actually communicate with each other as well. We can see attachments. So attachments would be things like logs that come out of the system. And then of course, any history uh, um, for, for that particular room itself. So if things are deactivated, activated. I'm going to select a different one. Um, let's go to meeting app across here. So again, Robert's room, showing one more time. This is showing when the MTR application is not running. Uh, click here on notes. And then we can see straight away an issue with meeting room app functioning was detected. And then it'll give you the explanation of what it thinks it is. Um, and then the system uh, on the pro portal will automatically start running a, a local diagnostic. So the user has to do nothing. The system does it all for you. So the system is starting to run that local diagnostic. Then it figures out that there's a misconfiguration because the Skype user is not signed in. Uh, and then it effectively tells you what fix needs to be applied to the system if it can't do it itself. Or if it can do it itself, it will automatically apply that fix as well. So effectively, what you see here on the incident page um, tells you all the, all the things that are most important right away for you to look at. So active unresolved. So I can go ahead and just, uh, you know, just for argument's sake, I'm going to click here, see what uh, an active one looks like, click here on notes, uh, and then we can see across here what it's trying to do uh, as an example. I mean, some of these are bad examples I'm showing because Robert did mention to me that he's been redoing his office. So he's been unplugging and, and plugging in a lot of his devices, which will be the reason why we're seeing uh, a lot of devices going online and offline. Okay, so that's incidents. Again, on the uh, left-hand side, if I move just below it, we then have Rooms. Now, Rooms is effectively all the devices which are currently managed um, via the Pro Portal. And across the top here, we can see 20 devices are managed, 7 are healthy, 1 is unhealthy, 11 are unmonitored, some are suppressed, 1 is still onboarding, and some are sleeping as well. Um, so in our demo tenant, which is what you see across here, we have a mixture of different devices in different states. You know, some are active devices that we use for uh, demos all the time. Uh, others are just kind of sitting there where we test them, we use them, and then we kind of switch them off. Uh, and others are kind of more in, in, in live environments as well. Uh, so you can see devices which are healthy. So again, I'm going to pick on my device here. Um, straight away, if I, if I, um, so my X30 device, my Poly X30 is of course an Android device. It will show me what the status is and it will give me an overall, um, status. So. What does it look like in terms of connectivity, in terms of hardware peripherals, in terms of weather? In fact, let me go ahead and just select a Windows one because Windows actually shows a lot more telemetry data. So if I go here, you'll see the difference between Android and Windows. So on Android devices, there's not as much data or telemetry data that we can put off the machines because it's an only one unit. Whereas with Windows devices, one, Windows is our OS, so we can put off a lot more signals from there. And two, a majority of the time, Windows devices tend and to be modular, uh, which means there's different devices connected to a central compute unit. That means we can then monitor much more items. And you'll see here in my office, which is a uh, which is a Windows device, I can see account management, I can see OS firmware updates, configuration settings, hardware, display, security, connectivity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If I open up account management as an example, you know it will give me the basics, right? So it will say, hey, this is connected via Wi-Fi. Microsoft don't. Uh, recommend devices to be connected via Wi-Fi, which is why I've got a warning that's popped up here. And I can open the ticket to see 
uh, what Microsoft is recommending. But if I want to see more signals, across the top here, we have show all signals. I can easily go ahead and hit the show all signals. And then you see I get way more, way more uh, telemetry data now pop up from every single device that's plugged into my uh, MTR to threat incidents, to security KBs, are they up to date, uh, to networking, to monitoring, to outages, everything pops up. I can, of course, from here, record an issue manually if for whatever reason the Pro Portal hasn't picked it up, suppress a room, uh, unenroll a room, or even collect the logs and send a signal to the MTR to go ahead and collect the logs. I can even, just like on Teams Admin Center, click on Settings. And you'll see from here, I actually get a bit more information about settings, right? So I can see things like the, the BIOS manufacturer and things, which I don't believe you can see on Teams Admin Center. But just like on Admin Center, I can then go ahead and open up all the settings on my device and and uh, and actually change these settings remotely from here. So, for example, if I want to uh, have Cortana voice activated uh, activation switched on, I'm going to go ahead and apply that. Uh, a device restart is required. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. In fact, I could I could go apply and restart now. So I'm going to go apply and restart now. I want to do that one straight away and make sure that's happening. And you'll see, uh, you know, in the logs what's going on. Activity. Activity will show if there's any logs popped up. Uh, of course, if I've been using the device and that will show up in there, I can restart the device from here. I can even see security. Now, again, this is where the difference comes from Teams Admin Center to the Pro Portal. Teams Admin Center will give you a very basic overview in terms of what it uh, monitors on the devices. Whereas with the Pro Portal, we go into a lot more information, a lot more detail. Uh, and especially when you're looking at things like security, you know, were there any threats? Uh, were there any vulnerabilities we've identified? Are we missing any KBs that need to be uh, assigned uh, onto that device? Um, and then one of my personal favorites uh, across the top here is updates. Um, so you can actually create update rings. So update rings, uh, for example, this device I have set up for staging, but I can go ahead and choose if I want it in the general ring or the exact ring and, 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 you know, even down to the level of how many days it should be before it pushes out updates. And I can see, you know, what updates have been pushed out. If I go include past updates, you'll see, you know, there's driver updates and things that have been uh, pushed out directly to my device as well. Um, groups is pretty straightforward. Groups is if you have assigned your MTR to a group. So for example, for me, I've assigned it to the UK rooms group. So if, if we want to filter all of our devices, we will simply just hit UK rooms and then all the devices within the UK will then show up. And then a call history will then show up as well. So in the past 30 days, 90 days, if I've made any calls, um, they will uh, show up across here. And just like on Teams Admin Center, I can open up a call uh, and see you know, what was going on on that call, see if there's any more information on that call. If I was unhappy about, you know, if then you can see I've got a poor call popped up here. Um, I can then go into a lot more uh, information, a lot more detail if I then want to then go ahead and decipher, you know, what was going on with that particular call. And you'll see it gives me a link back into Teams Admin Center where I can do a bit more troubleshooting uh, if required as well. Um, right, I am now 13 minutes in and I've literally only just showed you two parts. So I think this may actually be a three-part uh, series for the Pro Portal. Um, so just as an overview, portal.rooms.microsoft.com will take you uh, to this page. You will then see the latest updates, the latest information coming out from engineering, coming out from the Pro Portal team on the first page. The next page is incidents. Incidents will show you the latest information about uh, or the, the latest status of your estate, where there's any incidents uh, that are active. They will then show straight away. And then if you want to have a look at all the rooms, um, you then click on rooms and it then opens up uh, all the devices that you have. I promise on the next episode, what I will do is I'll go into a bit more detail uh, in terms of uh, how you can um, uh, kind of pull up some reporting, what the updates look like. Uh, and then maybe on the uh, third episode, I'll show you what the planning um, uh, part of Pro Portal looks like, as well as features like how do you assign uh, a managed partner onto the portal to help, to help help you manage those devices as well. I believe this is probably the longest stream I've done in my Mo Mondays where I've been feigning miserably to try and keep it within five minutes. Guys, I don't think we can do it. I don't think five minutes is possible for, you know, all this cool stuff that's coming. So I reckon it may have to be 10 minutes, maybe. Uh, I'll try and keep it as sure as possible. But with that in mind, guys, I just want to say thank you so much again. Make sure you like, subscribe and comment down below uh, and look out for the next episode next Monday where I will talk uh, for part two on the pro portal and go into a bit more detail with that in mind guys thank you so much and i shall see you guys next week